Welcome back to another video. My name's Carl Gosling and today I'm going to show you how I built a proper budget sim racing PC. Now I'm not talking £200, £300, even £400. This PC cost me just under £140. Now, if you're adverse to buying secondhand parts, this is not the video for you because everything we see here in this video, I bought secondhand. If you're one of those people that will only buy new, you're right about warranty, blah, 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 navigate away, watch another video. This is a proper budget build. There's plenty of videos out there showing you how to build budget sim racing and gaming PCs using new parts. So I thought I'd do something different and we'll go the secondhand route because there's massive money to be saved. I mean, huge money. This is an entire PC for £140 or just under. Actually, tell a lie, that doesn't include a keyboard and mouse. Now, the keyboard I have here, brand new, is £12. It's a Microsoft Comfort Curve 3000. And the mouse I got to the right is another brand new Microsoft product, or to buy it brand new, just a Microsoft two button mouse with a scroll wheel. That's also about a tenner. Um, so you could add another 20 quid on if you wanted to buy a brand new keyboard and mouse. We've probably all got old keyboard and mice lying around. If you haven't, pick them up secondhand as well. I didn't have to do that in this application because I already had them. But yeah, secondhand keyboard and mouse, this is for sim racing, remember? So the quality of the keyboard and the mouse doesn't matter. You'll pick them up secondhand for a tenner for the pair, I'm sure. Facebook Marketplace, possibly eBay. Um, you know, maybe Gumtree. So yeah, 140 quid barring the keyboard and mouse, but they're so cheap, it's neither here nor there. Anyway, let's get into it. Um, you see me in the thumbnail holding the PC. It's one of these little mini ATX, uh, sorry, micro ATX cases. Now I picked that up for, let me just check my price list here. So the, uh, the case and the power supply, the power supply is some random brand I've never heard of. There's a picture of it, I'll stick it up now. Um, but yeah, the case and the power supply cost me a tenner off of Facebook Marketplace. Again, we're going proper budget here. It doesn't really matter what it looks like, as long as it works. Um, and then again, from Facebook Marketplace, I also got the motherboard uh, and this blue orb fan that you see here. Now, let me just get up the, uh, the model of the motherboard. It is an ASRock N68C-SUCC. Uh, and this is one of the motherboards from back in the day when AMD were turning off cores in certain CPUs. Um, and you could then re-enable them again in the BIOS. This motherboard supports that and it's actually exactly what I did in this build. So that's the motherboard we've got here. ASRock N68C-SUCC. And let me just close that window down. Yes, what I paid for the motherboard and the little blue orb thermal take fan that's attached to it. I'll put a picture of that up now as well. These are pictures from the actual PC. Um, that was 15 quid. So, so far we've got a case and power supply, a motherboard and a fan, and we're at 25 pounds. So far, so good. And then I picked up also from, oh no, this wasn't from Facebook Marketplace, this was from a friend. Um, a GTX 1050 Ti for 50 quid in its box. In fact, the box is sitting just up there. Um, they sell on eBay usually for 60 to 65 pounds. So I said to the guy, I'll give you 50 quid, you know, after your eBay fees, that's only, be, that's only gonna be what you'll get anyway, and you've still got to post it. So he said, yeah, no problem at all. So 50 quid for the graphics card. Uh, so now we're up to 75 pounds. Um, and then, so all that leaves now is my CPU, my RAM, and my SSD. That's, that's right, we've actually got a 256 gig SSD in here as well. Now, let me just start the screen capture software and I'll bring up the screenshots of what I actually bought, or I might put them in edit, whichever way I decide looks best. But here's our CPU. I actually got it from South Korea, would you believe? bit of a random place to buy it from, but I thought it's so cheap, if it doesn't turn up or it doesn't work, who cares? So, look at the price of this. US dollars 22, just underneath it, English pounds, 16 pounds 97 pence, with free delivery. 
So my CPU, 16 pounds and 97 pence. Now you can see there it's a Phenom 2 and technically it's a quad core, the X4960T running at three gigahertz. Well, this is one of those CPUs where they turned off two of the cores at the end of the production run because the four core ones were selling better than the six core ones. So they turned off two cores and a lot of the six core versions sold them as four cores. This is one of those. Whack it in this ASRock motherboard, go in the BIOS, enable the UCC, um, unlock co core or something or another it stands for, I can't remember. Um, and lo and behold, two cores come back to life and it actually becomes an X6 I think it's 1060 T. I'll bring up um, CPU Z in a minute and you'll see what we're actually running just in case you don't believe me. So this is what we pay for that, 16 pounds 97. Uh, next in the list, Corsair Vengeance RAM. Uh, I bought eight gig, which is the most the motherboard will take. I believe it's DDR3, of course. It's running at 1600 megahertz. In its box, look, never even used, I, I believe the description said, 20 pounds delivered. Like it's just, it's just crazy, but this is the price of things because it's old technology now. And don't you might be thinking, oh, this ain't going to run modern games or Sims or whatever. Wait and see. We'll get some some benchmarks up in a minute. So next thing, my SSD, 256 gig Samsung drive. I didn't even bother looking at the speed, the read and write speeds because it doesn't matter. An SSD is still 100 times quicker than an old mechanical drive. So 26 pounds 50 pence for this. And that is the entire PC, literally everything. Look down the list. Here's the screen capture still on CPU, 16 pound 97, RAM 20 quid, SSD 26 pound 50, case and PSU, tenor, mobile and fan 15 quid. And the most expensive item on the list for 50 pounds is our GTX 1050 Ti. And that 138 pounds 47 pence is an entire gaming PC um, slash sim racing PC ready to roll. You just grab yourself a cheapo keyboard and mouse if you haven't got one kicking about. So that is what that cost. Let me just bring up CPU Z, which is here. And I'll show you that the cores are unlocked in spite of you having just seen what it was I bought there on eBay. No, don't update it. Probably should have checked this before I brought it up. But so here we go. Um, now, where do I actually look? Oh, at the top there. Yeah, AMD Phenom 2 X6165T. So we now have six cores instead of four cores. Now, I've not done any overclocking. Uh, and again, you see the model number of the motherboard there in 68C-SUCC, ASRock. Um, and the memory, of course, 8 gig DDR3. Blah, blah, blah. Now, I've not done any overclocking with this at all. And these CPUs will quite happily overclock to four gigahertz. So you could have a 25% performance increase just out of the CPU by overclocking it um, to four gigahertz. Some will do 4.6 from what I've seen when I was researching this CPU when I spotted it on eBay for such little money from South Korea. Now, the tiny little ultra quiet blue orb cooler that's on this isn't any good for overclocking. It's tiny, it's too small. Um, so I didn't even bother trying. You know, you need a decent, if, you got, if you're on air, you need a decent cooler to be able to overclock because this bad boy will get warm. It is not an efficient CPU. I mean, what's it here? Max TDP, 160.5 watts. This bad boy is gonna get warm when you start cooking it up to four gigahertz or more. But anyway, the possibility is there if you want even more performance. So, that's the hardware, that's what we're running, that's how much I paid for everything. Now, the most important thing about this, of course, is how well does it run our favorite sim? So we're gonna run a Sato Corsa, we're gonna run Dirt Rally 2, and we're gonna run F1 2018, which is what I've got installed on this um, computer. This, we're in the bedroom here, as you can see. So this is my budget bedroom PC. Um, there's a funny story why I built it, which I might as well tell you. I won't tell you long. If you want to skip it, feel free to skip it. But the reason I built this PC, the reason I hunted out all these parts, is because I had a PC in the bedroom here. And I was cleaning the house one day. I was upstairs doing the upstairs. I thought, oh, I'll put some music on in the background whilst I'm cleaning the house. I turned on the PC. It hadn't been turned on for, I don't know, maybe a year, maybe a little less. Anyway, it took so long 
to boot up that I had finished cleaning the upstairs of the house by the time the computer started. And I thought, fuck me, this is bollocks. What's the point in having a PC that you can't even really use? You know, I mean, I don't do anything in the bedroom, really. It's, it's just handy to have it there, I suppose. Maybe if I'm laying in bed one day, I want to watch some Netflix. But I, I don't really. But I thought, you know what, I've got it here. And then curiosity got the better of me, thinking, oh, I wonder how, I wonder what I could build for almost no money you know, um, to improve what I have here. So I basically threw away everything that was, well, I didn't throw it away, that's a lie. It's up in the loft in another old cheapo case, um, a proper old, like, tower type case that looks horrible. And I thought, no, this would be a cool opportunity to see what you can actually build for very little money. Uh, and here we are looking at a 138 pound PC. Uh, and that's why I already had the keyboard and mouse from that old one. Uh, but that's why this whole thing has come about. And then, you know, curiosity gets a better man. I think, well, let's just see what we can do with it. So anyway, enough of this rabbit in. Let's load up a couple of games, get get a frame per second counter up on the on the screen there, um, and you'll be able to see exactly how this performs. Now, what we've also got to remember is we have got screen capture software running, so that's going to use some CPU cycles. Um, and probably a little bit of the graphics card, definitely some RAM. So the performance you see here might not be quite what it actually does. Oh no, because I've ran all these benchmarks um, without the screen capture software running. So I'll be able to tell you whether I can see a difference. Now, all these games are set at 1080p on medium settings. The objective I kind of had here when I thought about this video was to see whether for how, how for the, the money this cost me, the £138 this cost me, whether we can get better than console performance when it comes to racing games, to racing simulators. Because the easiest and cheapest way to get into sim racing is buy a second-hand console, buy a Logitech or Thrustmaster set up, and away you go. But with the PC side of things, we've got a much larger library of sims that you can race with. We've got all the modifications that can you know, the modern community as well that comes along with all these different games that we have that consoles don't. You have a vast array of hardware to choose from, uh, both in the way of steering wheels, pedals, shifters, but also, you know, aftermarket stuff like digital, di aftermarket, it's all aftermarket. Um, more abstract stuff, I should say, like digital dashboards uh, and other little bits and pieces, tactile transducer setups, you know, for, uh, for really feeling what's going on, you know, in the, in the games and that. So there are lots of reasons that you might want a PC versus a console. Um, so that's why I thought we'd see what we can do here. Now, this is a Sato Corsa fired up here. Everything's on medium on 1080p and we're hitting over 90 frames a second. Most people, if you're looking to build a budget PC, are not gonna have a monitor or a television that does over 60 frames a second. So we've got 50% overhead here, which means you could go from medium settings maybe up to high and still well be over the 60 FPS that we'd ideally like to see, we're over 100 now, look. And of course, this will run a little quicker without the screen capture software on, um, and it will also run a little quicker the longer the game plays. The computer will cache things into RAM. At the moment, it's loading everything up as it goes. We're, we're, we're pretty much hovering around 100 odd here. That is plenty. I mean, way more than we need. Consoles, you're looking at 60 FPS on the very newest ones, depending on the game. Uh, if you're lucky, most of them still run at 30 FPS at 1080p. Some will do 4K, they'll definitely be at 30 frames a second. And whilst it's smooth, it's not as responsive as this. Look, yeah, we're, we're pretty much sitting here. This is quite impressive. 105, 106 FPS without any issues. I hope that screen overlay gets captured as well, otherwise I'll be annoyed. But if you, if you can't see it for whatever reason, I'm reading it out anyway. But that's the Seto Corsa, 110, 111, 115. It's actually picking up a little bit the longer the game runs. As I say, it's caching things um, and optimizing things a little bit. So well over 100 FPS. Can't ask for more than that. You could, you know, you could quite happily turn those settings up from medium to high, maybe whack anti-aliasing on if you want to. Obviously, there's no anti-aliasing on at the moment. It's literally, I've literally just gone into each game, click the medium preset for each of these three games to demonstrate what, you know, what we can get here. Now, I may just have to, um, a lot of these games, I've got an old mechanical hard drive in here as well. So some of these games are installed on that, others are installed on the SSD. So 
it might take a little while to load some of these from the old mechanical drive because it is old. So um, I might just skip to this being loaded now. Or I may keep rabbiting whilst it's doing it, depending just how long it takes. Right, let's load it up. So where's the options? F2 game options. <laughs> My camera here is in front of the screen, so I couldn't see where the options were. Settings. As I, get, as I say, everything here is on medium settings. Um, where is the bench? Oh, benchmark was back there. Let's just go back. Benchmark mode. Okay, so let's get benchmark fired up. So yeah, again, everything's on medium. Um, and as I mentioned before, and I'll mention it again, this is loading it up for the very first time. So it won't be as smooth, and it won't be as fast as once it's ran for a little while and everything's been cached. Um, this game is a little slow to load because it is on the old mechanical driver. When I say old, it's probably 10 years old, something like that. I think it's only 300, 300 meg. Uh, 300 gig, sorry, yeah, 300 gigabytes, 300 meg. I wouldn't even be able to load anything or install anything. So, yeah, right, so here we are, start line looking at 70 or so FPS at the minute, and we're off. Still hovering around 70, mid 70s. And what have we got on the track here? Quite a lot of cars. I couldn't tell you the exact number because I didn't, I didn't look, but we're, um, yeah, we're still mid 70s. Everything's on medium, 1080p. We're well over 60 FPS, so we're still kicking the console's ass, um, and with all the advantages of a PC. We're now up into the 80s, 90, just, just, just touch 90 FPS. As I say, this will get smoother and faster the longer you play the game, because it's loading everything for the first time. I know I'm repeating that, but it's important because, well, actually, to be honest, it isn't important. We're still well over the 60 FPS threshold, which is all we need to be. To be honest, even if we held 45 SPS, F, bleh, FPS V-Synced, we're still gonna be 50% faster than most of your consoles. Um, but we're not, we're up into the 90s now. So just like a Sato Corsa, we're absolutely kicking ass here. Um, it's just impressive what we can do with a PC for such little money. So, um, I mean, is, is that long enough, you guys? You, you think that's enough? You can see we're at 75 now, 80. So we're flicking between 70 and 90 FPS here in F1 2018. I think that's that's enough to show you. So let's let's bosh out of this. Quit to main menu. Um, it's just amazing that what we can do. 138 quid. You know, I don't think I don't think anybody can complain at that. And we get all the advantages of having a PC versus a console. Um, so let's let's get out of this. And let's go to the last game I'm going to demonstrate, which is going to be Dirt Rally 2. I've got Dirt Rally 1 on here as well, but we'll do Dirt Rally 2 because that's the newest. Now, I don't think from memory that has a benchmark built in. So I have an Xbox pad here because both my sim rigs are downstairs. There's a bed immediately behind me, so I couldn't sit a sim rig here even if I wanted to. Actually, to be honest, I thought it might be really funny to put my play seat challenge on the bed, set up and race literally from behind me. Um, and I actually forgot about that idea, otherwise I probably would have done it and I'm wishing now I'd remember because that would have been fucking hilarious. Um, but I forgot, so unfortunately, Xbox pad. Right, uh, again, everything is on medium. Let's just fire up whatever stage we happen to be on here, whatever car we happen to be in. Everything's on medium, 1080p. Let's see what we can get in Dirt Rally 2. Now, this is the, the newest of all the titles. This is probably going to be the one that's going to cane this little setup the most. So, I can't actually remember what we got in this. It must have been over 60, or I wouldn't have been making the video. Um, so, I think we can pretty much say it's going to be decent. But yeah, we'll just, we'll just recap what we've bought here. We're running on an old ASRock motherboard with a Phenom 2 unlock to six cores, bloody phones ringing. I should have put that in airplane mode, apologies. Yeah, Phenom 2 unlocked to six cores, uh, eight gig of Corsair Vengeance RAM, which was pretty nippy stuff at the time, and um, a 256 gig SSD. Right, let's get this started up before my girlfriend phones again. Again, this is a curse of using a bloody mobile phone to take videos with 
I can't wait till I have a proper camera. And on that note, I'm a new channel. Throw me a sub if you like this sort of thing. If you want to throw a penny in the pot, there's a donations link as well. It'll all be going towards a new camera. So girlfriends can't phone me midway through making videos. Anyway, um, let's get let's get this stage started. I don't care about jumping the start. We just want to see the performance. This is weird playing on a controller. So, oh, wow, wow, this feels horrible. <laughs> how do console players do it? Or how does anyone, this is, this is horrible. Anyway, the frames per second, what we at, 70 odd. Oh, wow, yeah, so again, even in Dirt Rally 2, which is probably, it's quite a graphically demanding title for a race game. Most race games, most simulators are not that graphically demanding because it's all playing circuits. Is that not the brake? I guess maybe it wasn't the brake. <laughs> Who knows? I don't know the controls are. But yeah, 70, we're pretty much hovering around 70 FPS. Dropping a couple of frames down to 68, 66, going back up again to 70. But yeah, we're, we just dropped to 59 there. Okay, so just a touch below 60. But again, it's the first time it's loaded up. It's gonna cache things, it's gonna get smoother. I'm not gonna crash into bushes so much, hopefully, or trees. Um, but yeah, mid 70s now. You know, even, even now everything's getting a little smoother already just as it caches it all for the first time. Yeah, mid, mid 70s again. So just, just perfectly good performance for medium settings. Let's just crash into the tree and leave it there. 80 FPS when you're in a bush. Um, so that's, that is more than enough performance. Let's just stop the screen capture here. Uh, oh, uh, F9. Yeah, marvellous. So that is more than enough performance. That's, performance. That's three of the most popular titles that people are going to be playing out there, um, sim-wise. And we are doing that on a £138 sim racing or gaming PC. And just uh, I mean, talking about gaming, this will obviously perform similarly for you know your first-person shooters, whatever other types of game you might want to play. You know, um, you're not going to expect lightning performance, but anything that holds 60 FPS is more than enough. So let's just go through that price list again. CPU, £16.97. It's a joke. 8 gig of Corsair Vengeance RAM, fast EDR3 at the time, 20 quid. SSD, £26.50. Case and power supply, tenner. You know, it's basically an unbranded PSU and an unbranded case. Don't matter, it works. 15 quid for your motherboard and fan, um, 50 quid for the 1050 Ti, which is the most expensive part of the build. Now, also, this is an interesting point. You can spend more money on other things, um, but this was just really to show what you can, this, this will still play these titles for as long as you play these titles at this performance. It isn't suddenly gonna drop. Uh, and you may well find you know, that you'll still be able to play some of the newer ones coming out still on medium for the next couple of years. So don't think, ah, oh, be a waste of money buying it and building it now it'll be no use in two years time it won't be no use in two years time it might be a little slower with the, the brand new games coming out but it's 138 quid throw it away if you skin and just build another one for the same money <laughs> who cares um it don't cost enough to worry about you could spend more than that on a pair of jeans um <laughs> anyway you get the point so yeah there it is there's my proper budget sim racing slash gaming pc build there's all the parts we've used. There's where I bought them all from. You can all do exactly the same if you want to. The entry point to PC Sim Racing is not up here. It's really down here. In fact, it's, it's down there somewhere. So low, it's not even on camera. Um, but that's the end of that video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Any questions, pop them in the comments. If you like this sort of stuff, sub. Um, Watch the rest of the videos, and don't pot in the penny, whatever you want to do, it's all appreciated. Uh, have a great day, and of course, take it easy.